bad dia or a bad month. Okay. Alice, maybe before as we wait for that prayer, we can, yeah, please give me a comment. But was it January or in January? Let me know. Let me know how's business doing. Uh, half, <laughs> someone says half January, half in January. Jason says good January for you. Okay, Princess, very good. Gucci, really good to see that. Let me see a couple more comments there. Jason Oma says it was good. Okay, that's very good. Uh, let's see, let's see. Okay, let's keep that coming in. Um, January, Jane, Jane was for January. Now I trust by the time we get to February, then all of us are like back to normal and, you know, I mean, kids are going back to school and all these different things, but I trust that we're having a good, good time, uh, even in our businesses. If it's not good, it's on the way to better. So that's what I believe. I'm always trying to be on the positive side. Uh, yes, January, and you need to keep on pursuing. Edward, I like that. I really like that. Maru Omari says it was January. And, and Miriko, I see your hand is up. Did you want to say a prayer or did you want to make a comment? Let me know. I'm going to unmute your mic and maybe if you could also say a prayer, that will work well. Anne, are you ready? Okay, good. Anne, you have access. Please, you can uh, unmute your mic. And let me know. Okay, that could also possibly have been an accident. So it's absolutely fine. So I'm going to just allow me to lower your hand, but let me know if you put it up again, then I'll know you need to, to say something. All right. Very good. So it's two minutes past the top of the hour. We're going to get into it. Um, I would like to have someone say a short prayer. Um, maybe I could ask uh, Fiona, are you ready for the prayer? Or would you like someone else to help with that? Uh, Amina says I'm in here, January. Sir. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Amina says in January. Uh, <laughs> Abraham as well. I hope all of this turns around. So we're going to, we have a great guest speaker. And perhaps it's one of the things is going to tell us about how do we transform our regular cycles of Nja to more January sessions. Okay, so Fiona, please give us a prayer and then we'll jump into it. Thank you, Sam. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here. So we could start with our prayer. Um, Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for all you've done and all you're going to do. We pray that whatever is meant to be said in, in this session will be said. Whatever is meant to be had will be had, and whatever is meant to be actioned will be actioned. Um, we pray for our speakers and our attendees. We pray that we may be very receptive to everything, and we pray this believing. Amen. 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 All right, you can type your quick amen in the chat. And as you do that, I will let you know we will be recording this session. So we are already recording the session. Um, you should have had the prompt. And also I'll ask kindly be respectful of others, even as you share. So we'll have a section where we interview our great speaker for the day. We also have a session where we'll hear from the bank and how it can help us to grow and advance in terms of our goals. But as we share, as we ask you questions, please be respectful. Mm -hmm. The reason why we record these sessions, I had it mentioned, is we like to keep a record of them. If you ever want to get back to any of the old recordings that we've, we've had since last year and so many, there's a whole library of them, their recordings. Um, I'll ask Fiona if you could kindly just put the link in the chat. So as soon as she puts the link in the chat, you can just store it away. When we finish this session, you can click on it and just go through what you may have missed. You may have missed a session that's really important and you can rewatch it. So that's uh, something beautiful that we get to do here. All right, okay. So that's that. If you want to use the chat, use the chat. If you want to ask a question, use the Q&A section when the time comes, all right? Very good. So very quickly, I will let you know who our key speakers are gonna be. Our key speaker is gonna be Albert Ngumba, Country Director, Market Force, amongst many things. I will read his bio a little bit later on. And my name continues to be Sam Chimera, and I am your facilitator, moderator in these weekly sessions. Super excited to be here. And I know that Albert as well is excited to be here. So Fiona has put the link in the chat. So you can copy that and, and later on check out uh, the library of uh, sessions that we have had, okay? Okay, so right now, let me talk you through what the agenda will be. We'll have a welcome note from uh, Mr. Peter Lumiere, 
We'll then get into our interview chat with our guest speaker, Albert, and then we'll have a Q&A se session. So it will be short, but I'd like, to, I'd like you to already think of what question you'd like to ask when it comes to scaling your business, okay? It's the beginning of the year. We all want to grow. Some of us want to grow to more than one branch in our space where we are. Some of us want to extend to branches extreme on the extreme sides of, of the town where we may be to different spaces. But there's also those of us who want to extremely just grow in terms of crossing borders, whether it's online, whether it's uh, actual branches away from uh, the country where we are, from Nairobi, from Kenya to other different parts. Our guest speaker is going to handle all that. Why? Because he's done it himself. And that's why we got him for you today. Okay, so get a piece of paper, get a pen, take, uh, get ready to take some, some arduous notes. After that, we'll hear from CopBank and how it can help us to extend our businesses, how to expand. And then at the end of that, we'll have a call to action and wrap up. So the whole period will be about an hour and a half. And it's a short but sweet, and we like to keep it that way. We don't want to keep you too long from your business. Okay, so super excited to get started. And as we get started, I'd like to invite Mr. Peter. Dumia, head of non-financial services, to open up here with a welcome note, but also for those of us who are here for the first time, it's always good to hear why are we doing this, why is this, this weekly session, why are these weekly webinar sessions important to COP, and what's the impact they're having. So Peter, I welcome you, please. Thank you. Thank you so very much, uh, Sam, for the introduction and also for leading the session. A very warm welcome to our customers and the participants for the day. We are glad to meet again. This is another Thursday where we always uh, have a session to interact, to learn. And I'm very much excited uh, today, Sam, because uh, we have a very, very good topic. And, um, and it's a topic that is coming uh, to us, having gone through some insights on uh, financial management. We have had a very good uh, uh, discussion and deliberations on uh, sales and marketing for our businesses. We have done something on strategies last year, trying to make sure that uh, we will strategize and plan for our businesses in 2023. And uh, looking at 2023, we had a session, uh, a first session last week, where we talked about economic uh, landscape and uh, what are some of the opportunities that will be there in 2023. And the Jola Moina Molide gave us very, very good uh, insights on how to, uh, you know, you know, to work this year and also to plan and also to align ourselves in 2020, 2023. And so today we have a very, very good topic, as I indicated, I'm very excited because we're looking at scaling now our businesses to the next level. And uh, we want to see our businesses even go to beyond uh, Kenyan borders. Um, and, and of course, then we will have to think uh, how then the bank also comes in to support us to ex, you know, uh, expand to beyond uh, Kenyan borders. We also have now a speaker who will also be telling us what are some of the things that we need to look at and uh, just to make sure that then we have a, a balance on growing and we have um, a very good strategies around now expanding. And so I, ours as CoBank is to really uh, welcome us and to wish as well as we continue in business um, and still uh, reiterate on our commitment to support us on the financial solutions that we want to give you. And uh, we'll be having a bank a speaker who we've not had in the, in the past, and she'll come in to tell us what are some of the tools that we can also leverage on uh, to support our businesses to grow and also to expand and also to, you know, to work remotely uh, in our businesses. And so, Kalibuni Sana, we are excited to see you. Looking forward to have a very engaging session, very good, uh, you know, discussion and question and answer uh, session. Let us uh, talk. And of course, we also keep on encouraging us to be visiting our branches for more uh, engagement and for more information and for more support. So Karibu Nisana in this particular session. Over to you back, uh, Sam. Good, very good. I see J uh, Jason in the chat is saying thank you. So I guess that's a thank you. Yes, if you can use your emojis, I see claps are going, Peter. <laughs> so if you know where those emojis are, just let us, uh, let Peter feel appreciated because 
he's definitely the one running this this uh, particular endeavor make sure that every week you get a weekly session you get a great speaker you get the information and the inspiration that you need but that also is not just about that if you need financial help uh, you can come to the bank and get the help you need so so peter thank you for the support that you give the smes now this is a collaboration between uh, corp bank and ami so ami is african management institute i'll take a minute just to tell you a little bit about ami so AMI is all about enabling and, and enabling ambitious businesses across Africa to thrive. So how do we do that in a very practical way? We are a bit like CoBank. We want to make sure you get the help you need, not just uh, a long conversation. So we are all about providing practical tools and the equipment that you need. So the equipping that you need is what you need. So we provide that. We provide that through courses. We provide that through sessions like these that are very interactive. So that as an entrepreneur, you learn what you need to learn, connect with who you need to connect, and move the business forward, as simple as that. And that's what Africa needs a lot more of. That's what we're trying to push a lot more of. There's quite a bit of reach we've been able to have over the last couple of years. We've reached uh, 39 of the 60 something countries across Africa. We boast of 42,000 plus people trained, and we have a digital platform where we have content in like five languages and 30,000 plus practical tools. 55 online courses, all this stuff we're saying to you because it's something that you can have access to. In fact, we like to share opportunities as and when they come through. And right now we're actually onboarding. So if you, if you are in a space where you want to grow your business in line with this conversation that we're going to be having today about scaling your business. So if you want to grow or scale your business and take it to the next level, we have a practical business learning program for you. It's called GYB, Grow Your Business. It's got all for people who are in Kenya, so you're a special part of that. And it's going to be completely virtual, so wherever you are, you can actually maximize that. And we have school uh, full scholarships available for qualified applicants. Um, I'm going to ask, uh, let's share the link in the chat. Uh, what I like to do is every time a link is shared, I, I ask you to just copy and put it on the side. Uh, so let me know as soon as you have that, because after this, I want us to get into a conversation with our guest speaker today. So let me know once you have that. There's also a contact person that you can reach out to, the numbers on the screen. So if you want to copy the link or uh, take a screenshot, you can go ahead and do that. I just want you to type yes in the chat. That will let me know that you, like at least a few of you have got it. And then we can move to the subject of today and our conversation with, uh, with uh, Albert, mm. right? Yes, 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 okay. Joshua, good. OK, thank you. So if I engage you that way, I'm just asking for your collaboration in terms of let me know where we are. So if I ask you to do something like that, that's the purpose so that no one is missing out. OK, good. So let me move on here. Quick connect. I want you to finish this sentence for me in the chat. Before you consider scaling your business, first you need to fill that in for me. How would you finish that sentence? How would you finish that sentence? Before you consider scaling your business, first you need to. So if you're advising someone or your personal belief, what does that look like? Before you consider scaling your business, first you need to finish that sentence for me, please. Ah, so today we're going to be doing quite a bit of thinking here. Okay, strategize, <laughs> make a profit, yes. It's useful to make a profit before you try to scale. Uh, plan ahead, plan, and uh, let me see, plan, consider space, plan, 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 so much planning, uh, why and what you want to scale up, analyze current status of the business, okay, okay, be stable, uh, thank you for the speed, by the way, visualize the big picture, uh, site, I guess, yeah, location, location, Joshua says, before you scale, you need to ask, why are you scaling in the first place, uh, current status of the business, yeah, not everyone can scale. I just wake up and scale. Um, strategize. Albert, I hope you're looking at this because uh, this is definitely your zone and I'm sure you're excited to give your comments. Our guest is a super, 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 um, I want to name him the, the Mr. Expansion, but let me, let me hold up on baptizing our guests because um, he's done quite a bit of this from uh, entrepreneur side, but also on the corporate side. I'll just read a few more. Planning. Do a SWOT, research the need, be, uh, be in confidence, 
Uh, okay, I, obviously I, I can't finish it. Perfect your product and service. Petro, Nila, thank you so much. Uh, Hub Capital. Okay, so many things to consider and I appreciate your, your feedback on that one. So at this point, I'd like to invite our guest speaker. Okay, our long awaited guest speaker. His name, as you can see on the screen, is Albert Ngumba. He's the country director for Market Force, which is Market Force is essentially a B2B retail distributor all across Africa. And they do some really, really awesome work. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about our guest speaker. He's passionate about all things sectors, especially finance and agri. So if you're in agri, I think he'll be speaking directly to that. Um, he's worked with uh, projects that are upwards of from fifty thousand dollars to three million US dollars. He's worked with Market Force, working with uh, about fifty banks and quite a number of regulators, and and about several hundred local merchants, serving twenty five million users in West and North Africa. So, if I talk about expansion, this is the gentleman that we need to have. His strengths are in uh, straight strategy, business planning, team management, budgeting, forecasting, project management, all these different things, okay? And right now, if you're interested in what role he's playing, it's a country director. But the interesting thing is he's just got into that role. Last year, he was head of enterprise performance and expansion. And uh, I think starting in the next couple of days, he'll be moving to Tanzania. So Albert, maybe you'll tell us a bit about how that happened and where that's going. But for the sake of your interest, I think I should let you know he's worked across Africa quite heavily. So, of course, from Kenya to Egypt, Ethiopia, Morocco, Cameroon, DRC, Senegal, Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, like, yeah, there's quite a number of spaces. But what I'm most interested in, despite the great, uh, great, great, great achievements on that corporate side, I also like that he is just another entrepreneur. He runs businesses. And I'd like him to tell us about those several businesses. And uh, he has a story about how he started, I think, his first business remotely. <laughs> Immediately, that got me interested. So at this point, I'd like to uh, ask uh, Albert, please, you're welcome. Um, tell us, I don't know which story you wanted to start with, but um, just how would you, I hope I didn't leave out anything. How would you uh, introduce yourself in case I left out something? And tell us especially about this whole entrepreneur side of, of you, because that's the room is full of entrepreneurs here. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. I hope you can hear me well. Perfectly, sir. Yeah, that's a great introduction befitting a king. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, but I'm honored. Yeah, so like Sam has said, my name is Albert Gumba, um, and I'll probably talk through my journey, um, take you through uh, a lot of the things I've done uh, from a corporate side of view and the learnings I've had, and even from an entrepreneur point of view. Um, today's conversation is, uh, is a conversation that is very close to my heart around expansion. Um, and expansion is something that I have done for the past couple of years. It's something I have looked at, whether you are expanding from uh, within the country, you know, from one town to another, um, or even you are expanding into another uh, country. So like Sam has mentioned, I've had, um, uh, I've been lucky to work in a couple of countries um, across Africa. I've been lucky to work with multiple teams um, in different countries and also sit in various countries, uh, whether it is uh, Kenya, whether it is Ghana, whether it is Nigeria, Ethiopia, um, Egypt, I've been, I've been lucky to experience all these different environments. So I guess we dig uh, right into it. It's interesting, um, the answers that have come through around what are the things you yeah. should consider when you are scaling. Yeah, well, tell me, yeah. what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, uh, a, a lot of the people are actually spot on. Um, some of the things that you really have to look at are you know, there are probably things I want to talk about. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll cover a couple of them, um, mm -hmm. but the list is, is, is quite big. You know, when you are expanding, there, is, um, there are a lot of factors you have to consider. And expanding to a town is different from expanding to a different country. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and the dynamics are very, very different. So maybe I'll uh, take uh, everyone through my thoughts around, you know, the different things that you have to look at. Yeah, yeah, okay. So let's um, 
let's maybe if we could start take one step back. How did you get into entrepreneurship? Because everyone is an entrepreneur here, business side. I think there's a story about you starting a business remotely. That is a very strange thing. So tell us a bit about that, and then maybe I'll ask you a couple of questions. Yeah, so I've <clears throat> I've had the opportunity to start a business in Kenya when I was away. Um, and at the same time, when I was starting that business in Kenya, I was actually starting a business in another country. So I kind of ran these two businesses simultaneously. Um, I was actually in Ghana for a couple of years and I saw an opportunity um, to be able to export product from there and to import to Kenya. Uh, um, but then there are a lot of challenges that, that um, you know, when you take a look at all the other Kenyans who had tried to do that business, they had faced a lot of bottlenecks. And, and so, you know, I spent a lot of time looking at the market, um, realizing that uh, th this needs to get done. And the only way that it was going to be done is um, because I wanted to have a lot of control over what I'm going to do, uh, I needed to set up a company in Ghana and I needed to set up a company in Kenya. So mm. I did that. I opened up my first company in Ghana. Um, and immediately after, I actually did my first shipment of cosmetics to Kenya. Um, and while it was on the way is when I was actually setting up in Kenya as well. Of course, I used legal um, advice on how to go about it. I set it up. And by the time my product landed at, uh, at Mombasa, my company was all set up, um, running. And uh, this is five years ago. So I still run the business up to today. Um, I still consider even when I'm away, the business can operate because I've looked at how, um, you know, I've looked at the structures. Um, when, when you're looking at a business, you look at people, processes, and the specific product that you are actually selling. Um, and having spent a lot of years and a lot of time looking at that, then, you know, I was able to set up the company and, and get it moving. Yeah, I guess the long and short of which is, it's, it's a remote business. It runs by itself. Yeah. Okay, very good. All right. So um, I, I think I like where we are. We're talking about identifying, because the seed of this is identifying a new opportunity. That's what you've just mentioned. So how can businesses identify new opportunities or extend it to new markets for expansion, whether locally or, or exporters? Yeah, that's a good question. The first thing you need to know is that you might be having a very good product or a very good service. And that does not quite necessarily mean that it's going to work everywhere. And I would like to give you a very good example. Um, let's say you are in Kenya and you are, you're selling milk. You know, you're, you, you're a small business, you sell milk and you think, you know, I want to expand into, a, into Ethiopia. I want to expand into West Africa, for instance. Um, I've learned I have 100 cows, 50 cows, 10 cows, whatever it is, and I want to go and set up there. Uh, you have to do extremely good research. Sometimes the research that you have to do calls for you to go to that specific country. Um, if you're selling milk in Kenya, fresh milk, a very good example, and you go and set up in West Africa, you're not going to do sales there because fresh milk does not sell there. Oh, exactly. really? It's, it's that simple. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. so to, a, to, a, to a Ghanaian and to a Nigerian, they take more of, in Kenya, we call it UHT milk. You know, if you, if you sell fresh milk, you are not in business. Um, so you have to do extremely good research around the market. You have to travel and find out what is working. And, and, and even when you are playing in the service space, uh, and a very good example is M-Pesa. M-Pesa has been very good in Kenya, but you saw M-Pesa struggled in South Africa. Um, right. Because again, when you take a look at South Africa, they, they use a lot of visa cards. They, mm. they, you know, they, don't, they, don't, they don't believe in payments through phone. So whether you mm. are, yours is a product or a service, go on ground, do your market research, understand the need, um, and then be able to uh, take a look at all the other things that you need actually to set up before you can actually uh, say you are ready to roll out in that market. Yeah. So that kind of speaks around market research, being very 
um, aggressive. Even, even within Kenya, you want to expand to a new town. You want to go to Mombasa. Um, go to Mombasa, spend some time there, talk to people, um, understand. You, you pick a group of people that you think can be your target market. Um, yeah. Talk to them, understand their need. And then you define, because you could also be having some product that, um, for instance, if you are selling um, cosmetics, you find there are some cosmetics that will work in Mombasa, and in Nairobi, they are not probably the best. So that, that makes yeah. you to understand more. Yeah, I like that. And I think even in being on ground, that may lead you to a different idea that's not necessarily the one you came in with. And I, I guess that, that openness is very important. Correct. Okay. Uh, Correct. Um, so. In this whole process, what's the role of a brand? Um, I know you're great with sales, marketing, and all these different things. What's what are some strategies for building and maintaining a strong brand while expanding into those new markets? So a brand is essential because a brand speaks to the customer. Uh, that's what the customer associates themselves with. You know, they they don't necessarily. So you have to differentiate um, whether you are going to run your company, what do you want your customer to know? Is it the company name if, uh, or is it the brand? And um, you could be having a company and the brand is a different name altogether. Um, one of the things that you really have to take a look at, I mean, there are so many names out there in the market. It is, is your brand unique? Is your brand name unique? And does your brand name resonate with the current customer? And I'll give an example. Um, this is now from the corporate side. In one of the organizations I worked with, we came up with a product with a fantastic brand name that was actually working in Kenya. But when we rolled out the same brand, same name in Rwanda, it was actually an abusive name. Same name. Yeah. So you have to. You have it's to a your, cultural, it's a, cultural you know, language thing. It's a cultural language thing. So nice name, nice product working in Kenya, a different country. Um, it's a wrong name. Nobody is going to buy that product, actually, right, because, right. because of the name. Um, so be clear, even at the time when you are running your business, are you, do you really want to eventually, when you look ahead in the next couple of years, what do you want your business to be? Do, is it an, a Kenya business? Is it an African, a Pan-African business? Because if it is a Pan-African business, then your brand is very, very important. And, and it's not only about the name. Think about the colors. Think about the kind of logo that you come up with. Um, I, I like speaking a lot in, in West Africa because if you, if, you, if you come up with a logo, sometimes that logo, they have a lot of logos in West Africa and they have different meanings. Right. Um, so sometimes it's also good to, to look for a legal advisor. Uh, there are people who specialize on this. And they actually even um, put an IP to your brand name. And an IP basically means that nobody else can be able to take that name. And yeah, if they it's your intellectual name, property. Yes, it's your intellectual property. Then you can actually go ahead and sue them. Um, yeah. You pursue that. Like yeah. that, especially, especially when you come in with IT, because then you, if you're here for a long term and someone else, if you didn't secure that, then you may find a name and then someone else starts another company and then now you have to re Correct. find another name for yourself. Okay, Correct. okay. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so um, you did mention a bit, so I'm moving quite fast because uh, I'm trying to cover as much ground as possible and maximize it for the first, for the 15 minutes we have. Uh, let me just go back to everyone. So we're going to do 15 minutes of this uh, session, the Q&A that we've just had, uh, interview section here. After that, I want to take 10 or so minutes. So, Immediately you have a question, even now as we speak, I'd like you to put it in the Q&A or in the chat section. Anything you have about expansion, if you've been thinking about expansion, this is your opportunity to ask someone who's already doing it, who has done it many times before, to give you a comment on something that you have to ask. Okay, so I'm just gonna cover, try to cover as much ground as possible. So back to you, Albert. Um, how can SME owners effectively manage or lead, especially remotely? I and international teams. I saw a talk you gave, I think it was on YouTube, and you mentioned something about the, communicating with them. I think you were communicating with your businesses daily and knowing what's happening and all these different things. 
How does that work? And does it feels like a lot that goes into that. Please give us some tips. Some of us are just thinking of getting into it. Others of us yeah. are struggling to find that balance. Yeah, so communication really starts with the kind of people you have. Um, whenever you are branching into a new location, the talent, the kind of talent you're going to get within that country is super important because um, you need to know that you are away. It is a team that is going to be, whether it is that town, whether it is that country, they, they, run, they run the business, they run your business. Now, if you have communication gaps from the beginning, that becomes a huge cost for you to incur. Now, how do you look at this? You look at it, you step back from the very beginning because you have to source for talent. You have to source for people you see that these are people that you can actually work with. Uh, and it's always good in any country, um, depending on the structure that you're going to put, because you have to put a structure. Whether you're going to have two people in that country, three people, it doesn't matter, or 10 people, you have to say that this specific person is, is a person that uh, you know, I, I actually communicate with. So when you look at it from an organizational structure, you know, that person is on top, this other person follows. Yeah. The person who is on top there has to be, you know, the relationship between you and that specific individual and the language has to be very articulate, has to be very clear. Um, because if you have challenges communicating to the person who is on top, um, then you have a problem. Um, the other thing you also need to factor in is that specific person who is on top has to have a very good rapport with the people down here. The people down here, whether it is your sales team, um, whether it is um, whatever department, whether you have a, um, a finance person seated in another country, um, you know, the communication between that, the top level people you are going to put in that country and the mid level and the lower level has to be very well defined. Now, if you have challenges uh, with getting talent, and, and that is one of the biggest challenges you will actually have in any country, right. um, you, one of the things that you always have to do is try and get people who are more clever than you. Try and get people who are extremely sharp. Um, the first time I, I recruit people who are more people, clever than you. Yes. The first time I recruited people in five different countries, which I had not been to uh, myself, I was very clear on the kind of people I'm looking for. Um, there are people that, that I trust they can actually run the business when I'm away. Um, mm. So that person is going to deliver for you because he's sharp, he understands the market, you are clear on communication, you're speaking English. Uh, if you decide to go to a country like Senegal, for instance, very good yeah. for business, but you need to keep in mind they speak a lot of French. French, yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so, so communication starts from how you are going to recruit your team from the onset. And, and, and also the responsibilities that you are going to give them. Now, a lot of the things I have seen in Kenya, a lot of the companies that I have seen branching from Kenya, is they set up a structure where a lot of the decision making actually sits in Kenya. So yes. you find that the people who are in another country- but, Botswana have to first come back to Kenya. They have to always come back to Kenya. Now you have to yeah. keep in mind that there is, a, there is what you call cultural differences there. Some people don't like that. You know, they want to right. be able to make decisions there. So yes. you, you're bound to have communication gaps. And uh, there's, a, there's also a frustration of the time, the time gap and all those things. Yes, yes, yes. But uh, in, generally in Africa, the biggest time three hours, actually. Uh, whether you right. are, uh, you know, when you're seated in Kenya, the time right. gap is three okay. hours. And, and you, have to be, you have to be clear around those three hours. You know, um, you let people work within the time that the, the working hours. Yeah. Okay, so just to be clear, are you, would you be saying if your business is running in Kenya, you should allow the people in Botswana or Ghana or wherever some degree of capacity to make decisions so that they're not hampered by headquarters? Absolutely. Is that, Absolutely. That is isn't, exactly what I'm saying. Uh, but I'm also seeing someone in the room who says, ha, ah, yeah, 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 I'm not sure. 
I'm ready to hand over that control. How, what do you tell that person? So there's a, there's a very thin balance between the kind of control you have to give. If you give too much control, that's a problem uh, because you're not, you're not on ground. Uh, but there are some basic things that you want to allow the team. And a, and a very good example is this. So you run a business, you are in Uganda, for instance. Uh, there are certain decisions that you want to allow the Uganda team to, to make. So you probably give them, a, if it's from a financial point, you tell them, look, if you guys want to buy anything worth 100,000 Kenya shillings, as an example, or 50,000 yeah. Kenya shillings, that's fine. You know, you can make the decision locally. But if you want yeah. to buy something worth a million Kenya shillings, that has to be approved at head office, okay. which is now in Kenya. So you have to set such kind of limits to allow a bit of, you know, a bit of, there's a balance yeah. between what they can do and what you allowed, you, you allow them to do. You allow them to do and what you have to give them permission from Kenya. Um, so you establish, establish some ranges of, of control that they can have so that they are not hampered, but also you're not giving away total control so that you can have some consistency. Absolutely, absolutely. And the, and the other things that you also have to take a look at when you are when you are in a you know when you are working when you are when you are branching in Kenya from one town to another, um, yeah. there's a chance that um, if you have partners that you work with, you know you buy, you are you're in the business of buying and selling. If you are buying products in China, for instance, and selling here um, in Kenya, you still buy the same product from China and sell in in, in Uganda, for instance. Yeah. But somehow you find that there are local partners that you still have to work with. If it is space you have to rent, that is, that's, that's someone, it's a local supplier. Yeah. Um, if it is product you are getting within the country, that's, that's a local partner that you have to work with. Now, establishing those relationships locally are super, super important because every country is different. Every town is different. Um, and, and, and there are so many other things that you have to consider because um, one of the key things that we have also learned is, for instance, in East Africa, if you have a partner that allows you to scale, uh, it works to your advantage. Um, okay. And a very good example is, um, let's say from a security point, you know, you have a business, you use G4S, um, you have you have uh, you use jubilee for instance jubilee insurance um, yeah. and you want to branch off to other countries to tanzania and uganda if they are there the speed for you to start in that market is easier because then you're not going to look for new partners they're already there um you, you you really have to take a look at that okay so let me just tie this into something that you mentioned earlier you first need to decide even in setting up your business is this a local business is it just in the township is it local? Is, are we planning for Kenya? Are we planning for Africa? Are we planning global? And that perhaps then helps you even in the beginning to figure out who do I want to work with, who is in the different places, such that when the time comes to expand, I already have sort of a connection to potential partners. Am I right. getting you right? That is absolutely right. Okay, okay, good. So now I want to, to talk to me about some, some common challenges that SMEs face when it comes to scaling, especially crossing borders? So the first one is the cost of doing business. Um, every country is different. So we, we might look at it like it's easier to set up a business uh, in Kenya, but you need to acknowledge that it's easier because you are a Kenyan. So the process of right. you setting up a business as a Kenyan is very easy, right? You know the process. Yeah. Once you start going out of the country, depending on the kind of business, you have to take a look at the legal requirements uh, that are needed in that specific country. You know, what local laws might you abide to? If there is a city council there, what does the city council need? Yeah. Um, and even registering the business is normally uh, challenging. For instance, let me give a very good example. In in Ghana, so let's say here I have a retail shop. I want to go and open the same retail shop uh, in Ghana. And it doesn't matter the size. You know, it could be this size, it doesn't matter. And I tell myself, you know, I, I, I want to scale to West Africa. 
the first thing that you have to look at is what are the guidelines around setting up the same business. Now, that same business that you set up here, you are paying your shop rent 40,000 Kenya shillings in town, CBD maybe? Yeah. You need in the tune of $500,000 in Ghana to set up the same business. Same business. Okay, mm, and this is wow. and this is a this is a requirement by the government. The government will tell you, okay, so you are a Kenyan, you want to set up. We need to see the money coming into the country. So we right. want you to bring in five hundred thousand dollars into the country. To investment that's about what? That's about um, how much is that in Kenya shillings? Yeah, not sure. Wow, that's that's, that's give it a uh, yeah. So 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 you have to set up. You have to bring the money into the country for them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we allow you to open your shop. So the right. cost of doing business really varies from one country to another. And that's country. just Ghana, so it could be different. Yeah. So again, if you go to Tanzania, um, one of the things that you really have to consider is if you are going to have people on ground, especially Kenyans on ground, you have to take a look at immigration. Because you know Tanzanians don't joke with the migration. For a Kenyan to be, to work in Tanzania, uh, yeah. the work permit alone costs around three hundred k. Yeah, wow. and that's that's a proper way of getting it. And if you don't get it, um, with time they'll catch up. Right, they are, they are they are way aggressive. So the cost of doing business, whether it is looking at people, whether it is looking at your raw materials, where they will come from. Um, whether it is setting up the the, the shop, the, the warehouse, whatever it is you need, is, is 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 normally a big challenge, and that's why you have to do your own research. And and maybe giving the last example is a market like Ethiopia. Um, so you've opened up a business, you want to send your money back into cooperative. You have a corporate account at cooperative bank. Fantastic market. Uh, it's not as easy as walking into a bank and saying, "I want to send." this amount of money back home to a cooperative bank. It's a process um, that, they, that you have to go through in that specific market. And, and, and this is why you see that a lot of the, a lot of the uh, companies, uh, apart from M-Pesa, Safaricom, they've actually been able to penetrate Ethiopia. Um, and, and it's a market that has a lot of opportunities. So, Take a look at what does it mean for me to set up in that country. Yeah, so again, we're coming back to that point of you need to do research. Like, don't just go blindly, do the research, check, ask for, have, that, have those conversations. You, you brought in the aspect of money. Um, let me ask two quick questions and then I'll turn to uh, some of the Q&A questions that have come through. Um, reminding you, everyone, um, if you have a question, please put it in the chat or in the Q&A section. We're talking about scaling and expanding our businesses, whether locally or globally. We have our wonderful guest speaker, Albert Ngumba. He's done so much on the corporate side, but also he speaks the language of the entrepreneur, Vituko Ground, like here, here, here. Okay. And the wonderful thing is that he's sharing experiences from across Africa in different countries. So he's the best person to be speaking to us about expanding. Our businesses. Um, Albert, let me ask you two quick questions, then I'll go to the to the QA. You talked about money. So I want to grow my business, maybe not in the next quarter or next year, this year, but I see down the road I, I want to, I'm, I'm starting to see it. Okay. How do I prepare to do that financially? You know, preparing the funds financially for that expansion. Yeah. So you you know, expanding to a new location is, is basically cash. It's cash in the bank. Um, um, and it doesn't matter how, whether you have a lot of money or you have small money. The most important thing is if you've done your research and you're clear, then you, are, then you understand how much money you need to put in. Now, financial planning is super important because um, you... You, you need to be clear on how much money should I invest to expand into a new location. If you're expanding into a new town, 
what does it mean for me to expand? It means I have to open up a business, a shop. It means I have to have people. Um, I have to take a look at uh, the products that I'm going to sell. Um, so if you look at it from that point of view, then you already know how much cost it costs you to set up that. Yeah. So you have to work, you have to set your goal to say, I'm going to set aside X amount of money within a certain duration to be able to expand. Now, let me put a um, disclaimer here. You could be running a business in Kenya and you are not making money. Right. I see where you're going. Okay. <laughs> you, you, you go and set up that business in another country. You go to Uganda yeah. to you set up the same business. If you've done your research extremely well, you'll be surprised. You um, could make money. With and, and let me give you a very simple example. Very yes, simple please. example. If you walk in town, Moyave and Tomboya, there are a lot of, um, um, what, do you, what are they called? This drawer, rent a, rent a space. You know, yes. you, 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 you rent a space. A small, small cube, a yeah. small space, you put your stuff there. And, and so when you walk into this shop, they have all these people who've rented all these different spaces. Yeah. Do you know, interesting enough, that concept exists only in Kenya. It's, it's nowhere else. But Kenya, it's becoming, it's becoming a flooded space. So the first people who set up, they made their money. Now everybody else is setting up. Yes. Go to the neighboring countries, do your research. You'll find that concept is not there. So you're going to make an opportunity. Money. It's an opportunity. You have a fast mover advantage into that space. Now, Kenyans, we are very innovative, extremely innovative. Yes. And extremely yeah. good in social media. And, and very business savvy, yes. Very business savvy. The few countries I have visited, in fact, in some of those countries, you need to cool down. Yes, you do. <laughs> you need to slow if, you down. Visit, if you visit Rwanda, you visit uh, yeah, yeah. Burundi, yeah. even yeah. Uganda, you may, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you, you go there, you get frustrated because why is this not happening? Why is this not happening? You can clearly see opportunities yeah. straight away. So understand your market, understand the culture, um, and then uh, it's all, it's, it will be all clear for you. Uh, Very good. Yeah. Let, let me ask one. Um, I, I see lots of comments coming through. Uh, very inspiring and so on. Uh, let me just one final question. I have so many questions I could ask, but let me just ask one question. Um, we are quite a number of uh, entrepreneurs here, and we're talking about scaling. Albert, who would you say are the people who are doing it well? that all of us can, after this, go and study or look at how they've done it? Like, which SMEs are doing well in this space of scaling beyond their current borders so we can learn from them? Is this from a, from a corporate point of view? Um, I'm thinking entrepreneur, but if you have corporate, you can share them as well so that we can expand on that palette. Okay. So let me, let me give from both ends. Yeah. yeah. Um, Locally, you find there's a company from a corporate point. There's a company that uh, started doing uh, lending yeah, to, to other companies. Um, yeah. I, I hope I'm allowed to name it. Yeah, yeah, I think so, yes. Yeah. So there's a company called Pezesha. Okay. So Pezesha, they give out loans. Yeah. Um, fantastic. And, and they've been able to scale to West Africa, and I think now they are doing to Southern Africa. Um, it, 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 it's, it works well because, um, for instance, if you want to go to North Africa, um, if you talk to most of the banks here, you'll find that they've not scaled there. If you want to go to West Africa, they've not scaled there. So most of the, most of the Kenyan banks, they are within the East African region, right? You go to Rwanda, you go to Uganda, Tanzania, yeah. you'll find them, and unless it's a international banks. Mm -hmm. um, so th that space has kind of been identified like it's a, it's a space that is open. And so there are companies that have come in to partner with the same banks and they are, and they're able to scale across. So Pazesha has done well. They are growing at an amazing speed. And one of the things that you also have to factor in as an institution is, is um, you know, that money you need to grow 
is money that you can look for investors in whichever country that you're also going. So that's that's from a um, corporate point. Corporate stepping, back, stepping back to Kenya, um, there's a company called uh, Pickup Mtani. Um, and and um, they they started very small. They were the initial company that was doing renter space uh, concept. Um, yeah. And today, uh, they have really expanded to other towns. Uh, they are probably yeah. in 20, 30 towns in Kenya, and they operate from Nairobi. So what does it mean for them? It means if I want to send a parcel to Mombasa today, um, I'll use Pickup Mtani. Now, Pickup Mtani has built a very good network of suppliers, which they rely on. They are not in Mombasa, but they've been able to build an agent network there. Sometimes partnering with institutions, which are already established, helps you to also scale. You don't have to physically right. go and set up the, the framework, you know, the, the, brick, the brick and mortar, the structure. Uh, you can always form a partnership with someone and agree on a revenue structure. So they've done fantastic yeah. well because they've been able to scale as far as load work. All right. Very good. Okay. So um, now, Albert, I'm going to rush you. This is going to be like a speed, uh, five minutes speed, speed, uh, what do you call it? Quick fire session. Um, someone is asking in the chat, I forget the name, but he said, isn't it a challenge if you are hiring people who are clever, more clever than you? What's your response? That's actually, the other way around. If you really want to grow your business, hire people who are extremely smart. Those people, yes, there's that risk of that person is too clever. He can actually run away and set up a business. With your, run, yeah, and some people have done that. So yes, you know, how do you manage? Yeah, but before that person does that, he already has, he has set you up in a better place than where you are before. Businesses grow because of that. Um, you, you, if you limit yourself to your own, if you limit your company to what you know, then you can only grow yeah. as far as that. Yeah, if okay. If you get people okay. who are more clever. Okay, sorry, Albert, again, I'm rushing you on this one, trying to get as many questions as possible. Um, someone has asked, Shafiq Sadiq is asking, um, what is the regulatory challenge and market challenge facing SMEs typically that hampers growth? Maybe main regulatory challenges that you've seen. Again, it's hard it's, to have a short answer, again, but I'm going to ask for that. Laws vary from country to country. So you have to take a look at every country. What are the guidelines? The example I've given is for Ghana. The, um, the cost that the regulator has set is very high. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you have to take a look at it from a country specific. Okay. Okay. Very good. Um, someone else asked. Um, no, sorry. Muridi is adding to your voice, saying, "Great idea on hiring wise up uh, professionals. It's it gives amazing leverage." Thank you, Muridi. Um, another question that was asked here is, "How do you expand your business?" I know you talked about it, but how do you expand your business? Yet where you are, you're not growing. Uh, just touch back on that a bit. Look for partners. Look for partners. Look for people who are playing in the same space. Uh, people, every almost every institution wants to expand. Every company wants to expand. Partner with someone. And if that's a problem, look for investment. There are companies mm. out there, even, even banks, are willing to give money for you to expand, even if you're not making money today. The potential yeah. is how much can you grow? Yeah, yeah. Okay. If I may add to your voice from a facilitator trainer point of view, it's also important to find out why hasn't the business worked where you are? Is it for lack of partnership? Is it for lack of capital? Is it timing? What does that look like? So that when you're partnering, you partner to close that, if I may humbly add to, to what you've just mentioned. Um, how can, let me just look through some questions. We'll take maybe two more. If you have a, a burning question, you can go ahead and put it in the chat. One thing I would like to know about scaling my business is this, okay? Someone, Joshua asked a question, can I scale a Shylock into a formal business? Have you seen that happen? What's your experience, Albert? Across the different markets, I haven't seen Shylock as a formal business in any, in any of the countries. However, in most of the countries, the Shylock business does exist. Okay. Okay, so that, I guess that's a, yes, possibility. 
Joshua. Um, someone asked, do the same principles for expansion apply to diversification? What are yes. your thoughts? Yes, absolutely. Expanding, diversifying, whether you're di diversifying your portfolio, don't diversify before you understand whether there is a need in that market for that specific, uh, whether it is a product or service. Okay. Okay. You Now you've added an element of first make sure you're meeting a need. I'll give you a few seconds to touch back on that. I think you you keep coming back to that as a critical yeah. point. Yeah. Yes. I mean, the, the business businesses have to be set up to solve a certain need. Always put the customer first. Always. So if the customer is in your front line, what does the customer need? If you are not solving their challenges, whatever it is they need, then there is a gap. You are not going to make money. Um, you'll always have specific challenges. Be clear on the customer. Put the customer first. Very good. Very good. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, I think that's all we had time for. I want to ask Albert, is there something that you felt you wanted to add on to? I know a few other people are asking, how can I grow and get new customers? Would, is there something different you'd like to add to that? I think someone just asked. So, uh, depending new on markets the business or new customers. In, okay. Depending on the business you are in, for instance, in Kenya, I spoke briefly about social media being very big. Yes. Um, yes, yes. You can actually grow mm -hmm. customers through social media. I grew the first few years, I grew my business through social media purely. Um, in fact, it's important I mentioned that I, I, I didn't even have a shop. I only had a product. Um, ah. So I leveraged on social media to really market my product. Um, so whether it is you're going to use social media and, and, and you don't need to know how to do it. There are people who are out there who, who that is their job. Um, you look for them, you tell them, these are the products, this is my shop, this is my business, can you market it for me? Um, because in a day, they'll tell you that whatever it is they have marketed, um, they've, they, you know, X number of people have seen your business today in Nairobi. And, and they can even be very specific. They will tell you in Kiambu Road, this number of people have been able to know your business exists and this is a product. Leverage on that. Very good. Did you want to have a parting shot? Any key thoughts to, we have a, over 100 plus people in the room, 150. What are your thoughts, yeah. Albert? Yeah, I think my parting shot is, is, is through the experience I've had, um, especially being a Kenyan. Now, we do have a mindset when we are, especially when you're expanding out of the country, that everything works the same way it works in Kenya. That's not right. the case. You really need to change that mindset. Because it has worked in Kenya, it doesn't mean it's going to work elsewhere. Um, there is a cultural differences. There, is, there are so many things that you have to take a look at. Uh, have an extremely open mind when it comes to expansion. Plan. Be clear on your roadmap to expansion um, and uh, make sure you have money to expand as well. Very good. Or oh, uh, talk about money, or oh, you have the assistance of a great bank behind you. That is where we bring in Cop Bank. <laughs> thank, thank you so much, Albert. All right, that was Albert Mumba. He's the country director, and we're wishing you well. I'm not sure when you're moving to Tanzania. I don't know if you've already moved. How is that going, the transition? I was you're, you're uh, taking expansion to Tanzania, so I don't know if you've moved already. I visited Tanzania last week after, I think the last visit was 13 years ago. Uh, wow. Interesting. Um, I'll be heading there on 16th of this month. And you're going to be heading the, all the operations from sales, marketing operations? I'm, I'm basically building the business from scratch. From wow. scratch. So I'm looking for people. If you have Tanzanian friends, please, let's talk. I have a lot of opportunity <laughs> there. I'm looking for, you know, an office I was able to identify. Um, yeah. It's basically starting a business from scratch. And, and, I, and this I, is something I've done in multiple markets. I'm beginning to think this is the thing that excites you. <laughs> you start things and run, let other people run them, and then you go and start other things. You know, it's true. It actually does. It actually does. And then you see the business pick from there. Once you build the proper structure uh, yeah. and you have extremely good people, like now I'm, I'm very clear in my mind, the kind of person, I'm, the kind of manager I'm looking for in Tanzania is a manager that knows the space because I'm not a Tanzanian. I'm not there. 
Right. I don't know the right. space as much as that. That one person has to be the best. Very good. Very good. Well, thank you so much, Albert. Um, someone is asking for your contacts. Um, there's a there's a quote that I wanted to put up here that Albert likes, and it uses it on his LinkedIn. It says, "If I cannot do great things, I can do small things." in a great way. And I really love that. I thought I would share that with everyone. If you'd like to stay in touch with Albert, he's the person who's all about delivering smart solutions to everyone. You can follow him. I believe that is Twitter, AL Ngumba. Ngumba. You can also email him. So Joshua and a few other people are asking for those contacts. So that is on the screen. Albert, thank you. I will release you. Please give Albert a round of applause if you can. Use your emojis, use your heart, use your text. Let's appreciate him. And for those who are asking if there's a possibility to have the link uh, for this recording, yes, we're going to put it in the chat shortly. But thank you so much, Albert, and we wish you well in your endeavors. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Thank you, sir. All right. Very good. So please, we're going to do the same thing we did before. If you've got a screenshot of uh, uh, this uh, Albert's contacts, let me know. So then we can move to the next thing. All right, you have that. Do you have that? Do you have that type? Yes, in the chat if you do. If you got his contacts, the mail and also the uh, Instagram and all these different that the, the handle. Okay, David, good. All right, so it's 12 right now and it's the perfect time for us to be turning our attention to hear from Pop Bank. So Albert has talked about expansion and the fact that you need capital. You need a good bank behind you, and that's where Cop Bank comes in. So right now, I'd like to invite uh, our esteemed uh, friend at Cop Bank. She's going to be speaking to us about payments and collection solutions, and her name is Edna Murage, Transaction Banking Product Manager. Welcome, Edna. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Edna Murage from Transaction Banking uh, Department. Uh, our key mandate is, as Transaction Banking is to offer payments and collection solutions for our customers. So in line with uh, what has been discussed today by Albert, um, I'd like to center my presentation to be regarding how we can help you as entrepreneurs expand, how we can give you solutions that will help you uh, uh, collect and also make payments in a way that uh, once if you should you expand even outside uh, maybe the boundaries of Kenya, everything will be seamless in your end. And also should you expand your market base, uh, we give you solutions that enable you to, you know, do your, be able to reconcile your accounts uh, comfortably, be able to identify the sources of various incomes because the expansion can be within or without. So that's what I'll focus on. I um, from what has been presented on the screen, there are many solutions that we offer, but I want to pick on those that speak mostly into this conversation that we've had today. Uh, amongst the various digital, uh, digital channels that we have, there's internet banking, uh, which is a corporate and personal internet banking. I'll speak more into that. Um, and also there's the e-commerce solution. Uh, e-commerce, for e-commerce, we enable uh, customers who are selling or uh, uh, have a web presence, maybe an app presence or a web presence, we enable you collect through that. If you're doing online sales or if you want to branch into that, into a greater market where you're able to sell regardless of your physical location, like Albert say that he started a business when he did not have a shop. He started a business online. So if you're starting a business online, you need a solution that will enable you collect funds through that app or through that website. And we do something called e-commerce integration uh, that enables you to do that. As the third one is a collection solution, which is a B2B integration. If you're branching out, maybe you have, uh, especially if you are an entrepreneur who, who handles um, regular collection, collections from the same individuals, maybe you're a landlord or you have a school uh, or a, yeah, a landlord or a school are good examples. And you'd like to, uh, you are having, you know, it gives you the more you grow, the harder it might be to reconcile your records, the harder it might be to um, pinpoint where your funds have come from or who has paid and who hasn't. We offer a free solution for that. Our B2B integration is an, a value add for our customers where we integrate our core banking, our, 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 our systems with your systems. 
and it easily identifies from your end, notifies you when collections are made. Also very seamlessly makes it easy for you. Once you get your statement, you can tell exactly who has collected. I think, again, my theme right now is how, how to help you grow as you grow, how we partner with you. Also something called cash deposit machine. Cash, cash deposit machines are for our customers who I, I imagine that if you're growing in a certain line, maybe even your cash deposits are growing, cash still remains king. As much as you have digital uh, payment solutions and PESA cards and like, cash is still king in Kenya. So we, for that customer who has heavy transactions, heavy cash transactions, and there's a risk that comes with that, the security issues that come with that, the integrity issues, even with your staff, we can lease you a cash deposit machine, which you install in your premises for deposits to be done uh, by specific users identified by yourself. And they give you spot value for that money and you're able to transact from wherever you are. If any of you, you know, the moment that the, the, the cash is deposited in the machine, there's the value of that amount of money is realized immediately in your account, meaning that you can seamlessly transact whether you're within, without, if you have access to your account, you'll be able to do it while cash is comf comfortably seated in your, in your premises for the bank now make arrangements to repatriate that cash. Uh, so we take away a lot of headache for our customers who are cash heavy. Also, we have uh, the, the, the check alternative of that is the remote check scanner. If you're heavy in checks, uh, well, well, as we're expanding, we expect that uh, some level of transactions will go up. If, if the level of transactions is uh, checks, then we'll uh, lease our check scanner to you. Uh, you'll be able to scan your checks comfortably from your premises realize value of those checks within the normal timelines and be able to transact. And now those checks will just need to bring them to the branch um, periodically, probably once every two weeks for filing purposes. Also the M collection goes hand in hand with our B2B solution. Uh, M collection also is a way of identifying who our depositors are, who are these students who are paid into the school, um, be it maybe you've opened a new branch, a new school or you know, maybe you've uh, uh, set up another building for us to identify. So that's just an overview. So let me focus on, uh, especially the COP online and the e-commerce specifically for the next, I think I have uh, somehow much, how much time do I have? Uh, it's just a few slides. So I guess five minutes would be great. And then uh, I should actually, Edna, let me take the opportunity to, if you have a question for Edna regarding transaction and any question you may have around that, or general, I see that someone is really asking about uh, potential for getting a car loan, things like that. Please put the question in the chat or the Q&A. And at the end of Edna's presentation, uh, we will get some response from Edna and, and our friends at OP. But Edna, how is five minutes? Is that all right? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so um, in line with today's conversation, our, corporate, uh, our internet banking solution is a very robust solution which offers internet banking services for both the individual and, and the company. So the beauty about our internet banking is that uh, it offers timely, uh, timely payments. It's robust. It's a very stable system. For the businesses, our MSME clients, we offer these, there, there are no monthly fees in assessing the, the system. Um, so it's, uh, it does not have any additional charges. For transaction fees, you're able to uh, uh, pass those on to the beneficiary. So that's up to you whether you want to bear the charge as a business or pass it on to the beneficiary. It allows you to do swifts. We are expanding, we are going beyond our border. So when you're shipping, when you want to, do, to pay for your, your shipment from Dubai, you'll be able to comfortably do that uh, international transfer from the comfort of your home. Uh, you can do any cross-currency transfer. You can be doing cross-currency even within, maybe probably from bank to bank, uh, currency to different currency, it supports that. You'll be able to make your supplier payments seamlessly. Um, the slides are not in tandem, eh? All right. Okay. All right, yeah, you'll be able to make your supplier payments uh, for the various suppliers. We are, we are going big, eh? we are getting new different stocks. We are, we are venturing to different markets. We need different suppliers. So you can do supplier payments in bulk or in uh, a single transactions. We are, we, it supports statutory payments. Our system is integrated with the KRA and NHIF platforms where payments are made a, a, a bit on KRA or NHIF and real time. 
Uh, so we are paying for customs, right? We are we are getting big shipments. We are getting containers in. We need to pay for customs. We need to pay for our domestic tax for uh, our number of employees that we've added. We brought on board. Uh, so for the tax payments for our employees and for also their salary payments, the system will be able to support any need that you have, any transaction need that you have, we are going to meet it. So we need to do PESA link payments. We need to make that instant uh, PESA link amount of you know five, 5 million at a go and your supply on the other end needs that money to release the vehicle or whatever the, the case may be. We'll make that PESA link payment of 5 million or 15 million. We'll support it on a real-time basis. You'll do the RTBS transfers, you'll do the SWIFT, so the system will meet each and every payment need that you have. And we can appreciate that the more we grow, the more we transact. We want things done in a quick way. We are, Albert said that Kenya is, Kenya is very unique. We are very fast. When we go to other places, you need to slow down. But when you're here, we're not slowing down. We are, we are doing things real fast. So um, the system supports, supports that. It supports bulk uploads, single uploads, huge transactions. We are going big, we are dreaming, and we are going to venture into new grounds, and we are here to support you every step of the way. Um, other than that, um, we also have uh, the e-commerce solution. Like I said, uh, we just mentioned on that a bit. E-commerce solution, we want to venture to market. We want to sell beyond our borders. We want to have a, a web-based solution. We are going, uh, dig we've gone digital, actually. You're not, it's not that we are going, we've gone digital. So. The brick and mortar, the brick and mortar uh, concept is something that we should not not ourselves to work. It's good to have a shop, but you don't have to. You can start. Maybe you, you already have your business that you have. You have you already have your premises. You want to do something different. You don't need to look for another shop. Let's sell things. When you're selling things online, when we get our web developers to develop for you a, a, a website or an app to sell your products, we'll partner with you to collect that money. You'll be able to get, uh, you know, payments done before you even deliver the goods through our web and through our app. So my, like I said, my talk was, I really wanted to center around uh, what the conversation is today. But over that, uh, over and above that, if you feel that there's something that have, has not been addressed, you have the chat, you can raise a question. I'll also drop my email on this chat so that um, you can reach out in case you have any queries, if, if you have any support. Maybe there's something that, there's a need that has, if, feel has not been made or has not been clarified and we are here to support you every every step of the way thank you sam i think um, i've captured everything that i intended to capture today you have yes you have thank you so much edna now i'm turning my attention to um a bit of the questions that have come through so some may be for edna others may be for maybe uh peter could help us with um dennis has a question dennis karugu says kindly clarify um, the SACO uh, FOSA accounts. Would you touch a bit on that again, Edna? Um, all right. Uh, SACO FOSA, that's a, cap a payment cap cap capability that we have under corporate internet banking. Well, not only do you pay to other banks, like I said, it has various, it, it basically needs every payment need you have in your business. So if you're paying to SACO, if you're paying uh, to a SACO, you can pay to directly to the circle. That's what it means. As long as it's a FOSA account, a front facing account, because we know that um, circles can either be front office or back office. So front office make payments and it supports internet banking support to make payments to the FOSA account. Okay. And uh, while I still have you, Edna, uh, Adano is asking, how can I have internet banking as um, diaspora? I'm in the diaspora. Uh, for diaspora customers, uh, the, if, if you have a diaspora account, uh, diaspora banking uh, is able to assist you with that. We have special account, we have diaspora accounts for customers in diaspora who will onboard you regardless of where you are, but you need to have a diaspora account first. I see some comments here saying that I'm too speedy. Sorry, I felt a bit uh, <laughs> of a time crunch. I tend to wrap a bit. So yeah. Sorry for you that. A, tr anyway. a, tr a, true, a true Kenyan. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I'm living <laughs> to the expectation. You're not, you're not slowing down, yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, right. Um, let me just check if someone else has a question here. Please bear with me. Um, can I pay, let me pick on Christopher's. Christopher Nganga says, can you pay orders for me after the company delivers the product in my shop? 
Um, would you be able to comment on that, Edna? Can you pay? Can you pay orders for me after the company delivers the product in my shop? Well, that's a question of and the relationship you have with the with the with the, with the with the where the order is coming from, right? Supplier. Okay. Yeah, the, exactly. The supplier is the order I was looking for. That depends yeah, on yeah. the arrangement you have with your supplier. If your supplier is okay with uh, paying for goods after, well, you'll offer the, the channel. Work. Yes. Okay. Charles Ogutu is on the same. I have retail shops at different locations, but would like to have a software to help me monitor sales, stock, and cash flow. What do you recommend? Is that something that you can speak into? I had you mentioning a website and things like that. Sorry, come again. Charles has the retail shops at different locations and is interested in a software that could help him monitor sales, stock, and cash flow. Is that something you can make a comment on? Well, monitoring, the, the closest I can come to answering that question is saying that uh, we'll be able to, for your different accounts, you can view all your accounts on the internet banking as long as you've onboarded it, or, or onboarded the accounts on internet banking. You'll be able to see any incoming funds. I hope that answers your question. I don't know whether it does, but okay. uh, yeah, you can view real time deposits that are coming, okay. transactions that are happening here. Okay, Charles, if we've not answered your question, you could go ahead and uh, add a bit more in the text. Christopher, you have a bit of detail. Let me see, we have, um, yes, we have a bit of time. So I want to, Christopher, I'm going to allow you to unmute your mic and then you can just ask directly. I think it may be a better approach to, to your question. It seems a bit detailed. Christopher, kindly unmute your mic and ask your question. Hello. Hello. Hey, I'm Christopher and I'm a stockist of pharmacies. My question is, I've been uh, uh, going through some challenges and I'm in need of finances, uh, finance. Mm, for one, for now, I have an arrears in my account with the COP for about six months, which I'm, uh, I'm unable to pay for now. But uh, my business now is doing well and I need some capital to meet the needs of my customers. How can you help me? Well, um, in, uh, in, your, in your situation, say you have a, a business that has been, we have a loan, we've lent you and you are in areas, but now things are well. That's a conversation that definitely we are very keen to, to have as, as a business. I'd refer you, Christopher, to your, your branch, your business, your partners at the branch, uh, the, the, the branch manager and the business banker. We are keen to support our, our customers. Eh? Once you, if you are able to get, you can have a conversation or maybe even how to restructure your loan and how to refinance. But that's a conversation that I would uh, request you to have with, with uh, the branch. The branch. The branch. Yes. Okay, very good. All right, thank you, Christopher. And thank you, Edna. Uh, let me just look at this. Gladys is asking about reversals. How long does it take to for money erroneously sent to wrong account to be reversed? Uh, erroneous funds, there are two types of, when you say erroneous, huh? if you send yeah. money to an erroneous and uh, non-existent account, then that's really fast. You can get money as if, uh, you can get money as soon as the next day, if the money does not hit an existing account. However, if you look for, for instance, a PESA link, and that account, that account is existing and the funds are credited because we realize that PESA link transfers are real-time transfers. So it's just like doing a transfer to M-PESA. Then we'd need again to get the consent of the bank, the receiving bank, through them contacting the receiving account for a reversal to be done. And you find that is where the bone of contention is when it comes to issues of reversals. Because eh? we need to get, the, the bank cannot, if you send to the, maybe like equity, has received funds, Sam has received funds in his equity account and it was not meant for him. Equity cannot debit Sam's account without his approval. And that is where yeah. the issue lies. But others where you find that that's not, the account is not existing, it's very fast as long as you get the funds remitted from the other side. We have no way of pulling yeah, yeah. out the funds from where they're received, yes. So I guess the answer is it's hard to say for that yeah. specific one, because it requires get access to the owner of the account, their approval, and things like that. Yes, yes. Okay, very good. Um, Irene is asking about LPO financing. Does the bank offer LPO against uh, loan and against uh, LPO for someone requiring 
loan for service, uh, servicing a supplier's tender? Yes, we have uh, a very comprehensive uh, trade banking uh, solution for our customers, including LPO financing. Get in touch with your banker, we will have a solution for you. Okay, very good. So it's very short and sweet. Um, Brenda is asking, um, do you offer loans on reducing balance for entrepreneurs or do you still require the logbook and so on? Or title uh, deed? Well, the, for, for our loans, upon appraisal, there is, uh, when you're appraised, you can offer secured or unsecured loans, yes. We do offer so again, get in touch with you. Okay. The, the branch, so, and they'll, they'll go to the details because there's an appraisal process for that. Okay, so Brenda, that should be good news. You can approach your bank manager, your branch. Um, Peter, would you like to add a bit more to this? I think uh, that could be helpful as well. For Brenda's sake. Uh, thank you, Sam. Um, Brenda, the question is why is it that you don't offer reducing balance for entrepreneurs unless you have a uh, to present a logbook? This is just to clarify that we that we have both reducing uh, loan balance uh, loan uh, loans uh, reducing balance loans and we also have those that uh, are flat rate and most of all actually our loans are reducing balances whereby you if you want to come and uh, reduce that loan amount with a certain amount of money then you are going to forego all that interest so um I, I think it's just a discussion of you getting the loan schedule so that then you are able to see the loan interest that you're paying and the principal that you're also paying and um you're able to see if you reduce this loan amount with this um uh loan with this amount then you're also going to forego this amount of uh interest so yeah, I think you should need to have that discussion with your business banker to see how then they will support you with uh, reducing loans, uh, uh, reducing balance uh, loans. Thank you so much, Peter. Um, Edna, is the online, Peter, uh, sorry, Patrick, Patrick is asking, is the online internet banking app available in our smartphones or does one have to physically visit our branches? I think trying to see how we can digitalize this uh, uh, engagement with the uh, branch manager. Can I do that through the banking app? That's the question. Um, sorry, I think you're mute. For our personal, uh, Patrick, for our personal uh, internet banking, the app is available on Play Store uh, and also on the Apple Store. Uh, that's for personal. For the corporate internet banking, uh, that's uh, going to be rolled out in very near future. The app, what we have right now for the corporate internet banking is web-based. Uh, yeah, web, and you need to have a computer to transact. But uh, the app on it is on its way in the next probably two or three weeks. Very good. Adano, you'd like to clarify your question. So I've allowed you to unmute your mic. Please unmute your mic and clarify so Edna can give you the help that you need. But please make it brief so we can uh, finish together. Adana? Uh, my question is um, I opened the account while in Kenya. So I traveled out and uh, the business is still ongoing there. And it is paid directly to the account. But the problem is I cannot now access the account to pay the suppliers. So I'm asking how can I open the internet banking while here and have access? Thank you. Uh, well, the challenge with that, Adano, is uh, is very fine that we are dealing with the account holder. Maybe that's the best way I can because uh, for the for our diaspora banking, these accounts that are opened by diaspora banking are clearly it's uh, the identification and the verification that is done is tailor made for our customers who are not able to visit the nearest branch. When you're a customer with a, an account where just a normal account, you would call it a normal account, maybe a local account, would be a good way to distinguish. The challenge is how do we ensure that indeed this is a Dano and this, because we have to realize that a channel of making a payment that is where you can make payments real time, I mean, uh, remotely, 
also brings about the issue of increased fraud instance, the, 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 the potential of having is being fraudulent. And that's why you find that uh, there might be an insistence of you need to open uh, a diaspora account. And then once you verify that you indeed the right person, then we can connect the two accounts. Uh, but for your existing account, um, that might be a challenge. If you had uh, our internet banking on your existing, your local account, but you don't have access because maybe your credentials, you blocked your account, we are able to assist with that. Very good. I'll take maybe just two more. Um, Edna, Jason is asking, I have a business account with Corp. My question is, can I get a car loan? If yes, what are the requirements? Uh, I'd ask uh, Peter to respond Peter? to that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yes. Um, we uh, I, I just want to see your question that you have a business account with a, with Corp, uh, and and you're wondering whether you can get a car loan. Yes, you yeah. can actually be able to get a car loan uh, made before your personal use or for your business. What uh, normally is uh, the requirement is your business incomes. Uh, to be passing through the account that you have uh, with us so that then we're able to identify your repayment ability. So just um, visit your branch and they'll be able to assist you on how they can uh, support you with the car loan. Thank you. Good. All right, Edna, at this point, um, uh, okay, Jen, I think I had a similar question. I did not get anything about the reversal um, okay, let me allow Edna. Edna, just touch a bit on the two versions of reversals and how they impact time for re returning them. Then we'll, we'll then I'll turn it over to to Peter to land the plane for us. Edna. Yeah, uh, what I was saying is the concept of reversal is broad because it's specific to that particular transaction. Peter and Sam might have two different experiences when it comes to reversal because the transactions were actually different. Uh, when Sam sent money to an account in uh, maybe Standard Chartered via PESA link, uh, he put a wrong account, yes, but it was an existing account. That account number sits somewhere in, in the bank that was receiving that money. For us to have that, once you contact the bank and tell us that you did an erroneous transaction and to this account, what we do because we do not have visibility of the other branch or the other bank's account, we need to contact them and tell them that our client did a transaction to this number, and this was the amount, this was the date. Now the bank comes back to us and tells us this, uh, these funds were received in a certain account. So give us time to contact our customer and get approval on this for them to give the go ahead because the bank cannot, it's illegal actually, the bank cannot debit an account without the approval of, of the account holder. So we have to wait until this bank reaches its client and the client gives a go ahead for us to reverse these funds. In the instance that the, the, the receiving account maybe was had insufficient, the, the scenarios I've seen actually are uh, that the receiving account had maybe even a, an outstanding amount, maybe an outstanding arrears or something like that, or the account was overdrawn. Then now that, that brings the complexities of the funds are not even available. Or the receiving account holder uh, got to see maybe got on a credit alert that the money has credited and immediately went to the ATM and transferred or rather withdrew the money. So there's no money to do the reverse. So those are the complexities that come where you find that a, a reversal request takes eternity or might not even be successful. There's this other scenario whereby the perfect scenario of a reversal is you do a transfer to an account that does not exist. Once you notify the bank and we notify the receiving bank that there's this transfer that was done by our customer, then we get the money very fast. Next working day, actually, you'll have the money back in your account because there was no credit of that account anywhere. It was just somewhere in the, in the bank, in the suspense account. And it's very easy for them to now bring back the money into the COP, COP bank realm and for us to reverse to the customer. Um, those are the two. Another perfect scenario is the funds who are received in a certain account the account holder says, yes, I was not expecting any funds to do the reversal. It happens, Sam is having a bit of a smile there. It does happen, you have some honest Kenyans out there who say, you know what, this was not my money, just do the reversal. Perfect scenario, we get the money back to you. 
So the, the conversation around reversals is very specific to those, those are the, the mitigating factors are quite many. So it's not something that has a, you know, you cannot have a blanket you know, response of this is the amount of time it takes to reverse your family. I hope I, I think the I think it was very clear. Um yeah. And I think what I wanted to add was uh, it's one of those situations where prevention is better than cure. Uh, you want to be very careful as you're sending money, transferring so that you don't uh, encounter all these challenges. Can I get a quick answer from, let's see, Peter? Um, I have not been keen to, Lois says, I've not been keen to be in these sessions for whatever reason, but I think I found them very helpful and will be joining often. Lois, we are welcoming you to do that. Quick question, can I get a credit card if I have a business account? Peter, is that a yes or no? Lois, thank you that uh, you've not been able to join our sessions, but uh, after today's session, you found there is a lot of value. Yes, a straight answer is to say you can actually get a credit card if you have an MSME account uh, or any other account uh, that, that you have. So please visit the branch and we'll be able to support you on the same. Thank All you. right. So, Peter, I'm going to leave it with you. You can charge us away, give us a call to action. Edna, I want to say thank you so much. That was very very Kenyan, very full speed, but also very impactful. <laughs> so thank you very much. And the answers, and the answers I, were very deep. Next, next time I'll be a bit. I'll. I'll uh, no, no, no. We say <laughs> if we are in, if we are in Kenya, we don't slow down. So I think it was good. Also, I want to let everyone know we have the recordings. Uh, the recording in the there's a link that where you'll find the recording. For these sessions, I've just put it in the chat. So if you missed and you join in the middle, you can catch up, get the guest speaker section, but also Edna section when she was presenting about the transaction trends. For now, I want to turn it over to Peter um, to give us our call to action. And then in the next two or so minutes, we will wrap it up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sam. Um, and of course, uh, Edna and uh, Ngoba for the, for the great insights. Uh, we've been able to learn quite a lot of uh, items that we able to pick and implement in our businesses. But one of the things we keep on encouraging ourselves is to have a very, very good uh, discussion with our business bankers. You realize that we have quite a bouquet of solutions, the digital enhanced solutions that will support us uh, to do business. And, and it's just to ask ourselves to keep visiting our branches, have that discussion and, and uh, indicate the need that you have. And once you get these solutions, please take advantage, leverage on the digital solutions to continuously bank and also to make those payments and uh, collect money as well, because they are very, very efficient uh, tools to support you on both collections and payments. Uh, and then a number of us have been asking, uh, you know, uh, what are some of the solutions that you have for the expansion on business, the loans, the working capital? Please again identify that need that you have. Uh, you know, Goba talked about uh, expansion and expansion comes with financing needs. Please present those needs to your relationship or to your uh, branch manager for that support. As, as some have just indicated, we, we have um, a link that have all the recordings, all the solutions that we are talking about. And uh, if you visit that link uh, that, that we've just indicated and uh, we have already did it again on the chat, Please just copy and uh, get more information because uh, you are able to get details around some of the solutions that we have and also the previous uh, webinar recordings that we have. And so for us is to really appreciate all us, all of us, uh, our customers for participating, engaging us and always attend the session. Please be look, uh, on the lookout again for other upcoming events. Every Thursday, we are having this discussion. Thank you very much and wishing you the best. Thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for, for being very engaging. We want to say a big thank you to all our participants, of course to Peter, to Edna from CoBank, but also we have, uh, we've had Kiona in the background mm -hmm. helping to put this together. But in a very special way, we want to say a huge thank you to our guest for the day, um, uh, Mr. Ngumba. Uh, Albert. If you're looking for his contact, it's on the screen. Uh, if you want to ask further questions, I think Charles had a question on what systems is he using to track sales and so on and so forth. He's very welcome to have that discussion. But we want to say thank you from AMI and from COP. Thank you and have a very, very good week.
Till next Thursday, looking forward to seeing you.